most anticipated EMS competition in North America is taking it back to the streets. Patient assessment skills, aptitude, quick thinking care, teamwork. Three-person teams from around the world will compete to be recognized as the best. Join us for the GEMS Games Live, Friday, April 28th at 9 a.m. Please welcome to the stage the MC for the GEMS Games, Chris Brainerd. Well, good morning. Welcome to the GEMS Games Final. And we are, uh, we're real happy to be here in FDIC. And this is gonna be our permanent home instead of traveling around the country. This last Tuesday, uh, our teams competed in uh, a preliminary competition where they had to go into a room for 10 minutes and they were just inundated with patients that were of a medical triage nature, traumatic triage nature. We had a complex fractured neck. Uh, then we had a rapid fire uh, test questions, and all this took, took place in 10 minute segments. One of the cool things that we've added to this uh, preliminary competition is a physician debriefing room. When the teams got done with the fractured neck, they went into the room next door and then our physician that travels with us and then one here from the, the uh, FDIC area spent 10 minutes with the teams giving them feedback and given a little bit of a different point of view and basically trying to provide education for them. The teams this year that are competing for a first, second, and third place trophy are San Miguel Fire Rescue, Sussex County EMS, Zionsville Fire Department, and then DC Fire just completed their run through, and that's our practice run through so that we can make sure that we have any you know, issues and mistakes, we correct them. Because from this point forward, every single team will get the exact same experience. These preliminary competitions and the finals are designed by a team of volunteers from across the country. We work on this for months, redesigning the preliminary rooms and then redesigning the uh, final. Today's final competition, as you can see here on the stage, is gonna be a multi-patient um, incident. You're gonna have a, two cars that were racing. Everybody I think in this room can probably identify with kids that get out in their cars in neighborhoods and drag race. So that's what we're simulating here. We're trying to make these scenes something that you can identify with back in your own neighborhoods. When the car gets towards the end of the race, it flips, it ejects a passenger, the driver is trapped. The, the car also hit three passenger, or excuse me, three bystanders. And so you can see you've got carnage up here on the, uh, on the stage. I would like to thank the FDIC logistics crew for helping us put together a lot of these different props. You know, when I ask them, can you go out and find us a car <laughs> and then get it down to a weight that we can put on the stage, they made it happen. They actually, every time we give them something that they uh, need to provide for us, they come through. We have, I would say, almost Hollywood level moulage on our patients, so please take a look at that when it's shown up on the screen. And then Echo Health has provided us with a lot of the mannequins. They are incredibly realistic and you'll see our competitors providing care to those mannequins. Uh, the skills that you're gonna see up here, they're designed to challenge them. We want it to be challenging but fair. We want to make them feel the stress of a situation. They're gonna be graded on their ability to provide patient care, that they can also work as a team, they communicate and they have to be efficient with their time. This is a 15 minute scenario. And once we finish, we'll call time and then the three team members that competed will sit over here with Dr. Dickinson for some after action and a little bit of a Q&A back and forth as a part of our continuing education to supply to you. After the team does about four or five minutes of that, they'll be excused and then Dr. Dickinson will provide information on triage, blunt trauma, and then um, the third one was uh, <laughs> oh, mechanisms of injury. So, and that's, you can be awarded CE credits for that. So it's time to begin, so let's go ahead and go. The first competing team is San Miguel Fire Rescue. Good morning. 
My name is Garrett, this is Christian, Brian, and Matt, and we represent San Miguel Fire and Rescue just outside of San Diego, California. Uh, it's our first time at the GEMS events, but nonetheless, we're excited to be here, excited to show um, on the main stage a little bit of what uh, paramedicine looks like, kind of where we're from, getting back to the basics and uh, providing that essential, important care for our citizens that we serve. Thanks again for having us. We look forward to doing a good job. Engine 1, Rescue 14, Ambulance 9, Medic 1, Battalion Chief 2, Auto Accident with Entrapment at 1, Bobby Halton Way, Engine 1 on scene with 1 trapped, timeout, 1730. Medic 1 on scene. This way. Matt. Matt. Wir sind in Safe. Ich habe das erste Mal. Hallo. Ich habe es. Ich bin zurück. Hi, Mann. Okay, what's your name? Joe. Yeah. No, 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 no. Check out the rest of the patients. You guys. I'm Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hey, we got a captain. Hey, you got some pain guys. Do you have any pain anywhere else? Inside. One person Just inside. All right, I'm going to quit on you real quick. Okay. Got that. What are you guys' level of care? Uh, Baby. EMTs. Check. Is everybody? Is she breathing? Okay. She's responsive. Hi, ma'am. We'll be right with you. Okay. All right. What's the status of this patient? What's the respiratory rate? How's it going? He's over here. All right. One person inside the car. To, uh, yep, hold on. Yep, sounds good. We're at the time right now, 9 11. Okay. Let's draw that right here on the side. Okay, 9 11. All right, hey, how's your name? Holding C spine. I'm going to get some of my equipment. We'll be right back, okay? Right there. Hello, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. My name's Christian. I'm a parent. You got this right here, Garrett? We're here to help you. Can you tell me your name? My name's Melissa. Melissa, I'm going to put Melissa. this around your neck, okay? How old are you, Melissa? Uh, I'm 21. Everyone's going to be okay, ma'am. We're going to take care of you, all right? Uh, I was walking. Sorry. All right. What year is it? Rose, Rose ID, Medic 1. Okay. okay. What's hurting you? Medic 1, go. Oops. Do you have any pain in your neck or anything? Uh, Rose ID, Medic 1, requesting four ALS ambulances to our location. Were you wearing your seatbelt? Where am I? I'm you pregnant. Copy four ALS ambulances yeah. to your location. The department's working on getting you out right now. Okay, reassessing my bottles of solution. Really good. Breathing. Quick, quick second. Okay. Okay. My name? Uh, no, crowd of Melissa? My name's Marissa. Marissa, no, I'm sorry. No, no. Check your keys. No. Right? Ma'am, do you have any medical problems that you know of? Copy that. No. no. Problems? Yeah. I probably. Okay, palpate in the back of the head. Oh, what kind of medic? Over here? High blood okay. pressure, no, diabetes. No. If you have uh, one of your three firemen, can you stay with that baby until we can get over to him? Thank you. One of my partners is working with Sandy, okay? We're just working with Sandy. Did you see what happened to this baby, ma'am? I did not see that. Okay. All right. so is, it, is, is this your child, ma'am? Is this your child? Did you see how this child, was a child in the car? No. Baby, ma'am. I'm looking for any JVD. Any JVD? No JVD. Filling her chest, is it stable? Okay. okay, pelvis stable. All right. And I'm, at, I'm looking for any decap okay. PTLS, obviously. She's going to be fine. I'm going to try. Christian, how are you doing? Okay. And then filling her legs. Everybody's getting treated right now, ma'am. She's going to fill this other leg, Marissa, so okay. I don't know. Were you with him? Marissa. Any decap PTLS on your leg? Okay. We're going to take great care of this kid. The sign of trauma I'm seeing is on her head. Can you lean forward? Doing a great job. Here? It's going to be your baby right there. They're on your back. Can you step off? Cover this. And can you open up your eyes? I'm trying to cover this. I'm trying to cover this. I don't want to. Eyes are pearl. Right. Verbalize removing the clothing. Okay. 
Okay. All righty, Marissa. We're working on getting you out of this car, okay? They're going to have you out in just a second. We're going to take good care of you. What happened to me? So you were in a car accident. What? The window hit you. No, Jimmy, you having any pain We're going to take care of everybody, man. Right. My name's Christian. I'm one of the paramedics. Okay, well, we're going to take yeah. care of you, okay? What I need Level of responsiveness for this patient? Okay. Is it tracking me? Just focus on your painful stimuli. Right? Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of uh, extension Holding. posturing? What's, uh, what's my response for? I'm 30. 30. Alrighty. Alrighty. Oh. Um, Nine, copy. Bottle signs. All I can do here. Got my blood pressure cuff on. Assessing blood pressure. 114. Okay. Area pain maintained. My partners are working. On. Uh, doing a quick uh, head to toe assessment. Checking my pupils. Uh, we're going to help you out of this as soon Good as it's that door open. Checking the head. Okay. Am I gonna walk you're having some trouble getting the door open. Hey, Garrett. Yeah. You're in Circulation, a other than the obvious signs of bleeding that I treated. Garrett. Okay. And you don't I need a PC caller when you get a chance. Problem. PC caller. Are you allergic to any medicine? Uh, one second. Okay. Checking the top of the head, back of the head. Decap BTLS, just contusions. Okay, checking the throat. Any deviation? Hey, Garrett. Okay. Garrett. Are you an EMT? Yeah. Okay. We grab me the glucometer real quick while you're up, please. Okay, so All right. Move you up slide. here. All righty, so they're going to get you off. Right. Right. Take the vital signs on you, okay, and take good care of you. Okay. Uh, we, all right, these are on a backward. Hey. Glucometer. Okay. Continuing with the rapid. Across the collarbone, anything? All righty, guys. Down the sternum. So this baby was found here on the side. Yeah. Okay. Abdomen. All righty. Alrighty. I'm not sure. Real quick, is she still responsive? Baby's okay. Uh, okay, copy that. Do me a favor. Problem. Stay with the baby. Make sure that uh, no, yeah, maintain contact with you all the time. Okay. Uh, what's the right, uh, time to our okay. close trauma center? And no other by ambulance. Okay. Okay. And uh, do we have air resources available? Okay. Okay. Rose, Rose, I see medic one. Help on seeing the. Medic one, Rose, I see. Go ahead. Just confirming, baby. Uh, uh, requesting one uh, airship to our location. I'll have uh, FD, EMC guys, to set up an LZ uh, for, for a pediatric patient. I'll be back to you with an update on agent uh, status. Copy that. Good. How old's my patient? Good. Copy requesting an airship for a pediatric patient and requesting a crew for an LZ. 14. Copy that. 15. Yeah. My nephew is 4. Circulation. RS50, copy. Yeah, Miguel, IT. Do you have any other complaints right now? We're going to find it. Go for San Miguel. Thank you, Shallow. ETA for your airship, nine minutes. Repeating nine minutes. Copy that. No, ma'am. Uh, I need a, uh, can you get you the doing? blood pressure cuff out of my drug box over there and a How stethoscope, please? Okay. Ma'am, we'll be right with you, okay? How you doing? Uh, we just have a decomping right now, uh, possible neurogenic shock. Um, we have unequal Real pupils. Again, Child was hit by the vehicle, okay. five year old. Um, still just okay, we're going to start CPR. Okay. I'm going to strip out a bag for you, get an IV going. And then, uh, can you find that cardiac monitor good. Good. if they're not using it, please? You got a bag? Sorry? We are using it, yes. You got a bag? You got a bag? Copy that. Palpating the blood pressure. You got a line going? Huh? You got a line going? No, I'm starting right now. Yeah, you copy that. Uh, we grab, there's an IV roll in my drug box. Yeah. Black IV roll. Will you just uh, grab that for sir, me? Sir, can you uh, give with this patient an assessor? Yeah, can I get uh, an IV roll? Is she patient? Um, yeah, give, it, give us one second. Everything stabilized on that vehicle, batteries disconnected, no fire hazards. Yep. 12. All righty. Strip out of BBM. Uh, Pads are hooked up. 14. I'll work on air, uh, IV or you got IV? I'll get airway. I got IV. Okay, I'm going to go grab a BBM. Keep those compressions going. Hey, C CPR status, four year old over here. CPR status. All right, here's your BBM uh, right BBM. here. What's the start kit? Oh, start kit. Good to start with the blue. And then I'm gonna have you go ahead and take over. We're gonna start using the BBM on it, okay?
Start up, start up. We're taking care of everyone right now, man. Okay? No, no, no English. No English. Okay. 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 Obviously, I don't want to do large I do Okay, we're working on it. Okay, I just need you to relax, do some deep rest for me. Okay. Let me plug this into yours or not? Dance, pads, looking for flash. Not switching, not switching to pads. Switching to pads. Dropping my knees a little. Ma'am, we'll be with you in one second, okay? Um, no I can't get a rhythm. I got drawback. Flush. I need this. I need this to start working. Oh, Sir, firefighter. I need you to get her and take her away from the scene. Tell her we'll be right with her. We'll take her away. Start flowing some fluids. No English. Is this a malfunction with the pedal? Your friend's okay, okay? We're working on her, right? Yeah. Hey, we need to see color on her when we get a chance. Okay, if we can get some padding on the hips here, try to stabilize. Yeah, we have a, we have a, uh, a backboard available for this patient. Sir, do we have a backboard available for this patient? We're helping her right now, okay? Bro, we need a backboard also if we got a... Pelvic Sir, we're trying to troubleshoot this monitor. It's not switching to pads. Okay. So it won't switch to pads? It won't switch to pads? All right, hey, let's, let's prioritize this. You have an epi on board yet? No. How's her beginning epi going if you want? We're in asystole. Continue. Going for a pulse. All right, let's gonna, we're going we're gonna to stop here for a pulse. Okay. Purple on the browser, okay. purple on the browser. Yeah. Pulse rate. Hi, right, it's color clarity. Make sure it's unexpired. 625. Oh, so you continue CPR? I'm going to hook up my Hey, can you take this? Flow. 500. Handle this if I uh, go to the next patient. Are you good right here? Just ventilating? Can you help bag Let me know if you have any change of patients. I'm just going to go check on that other patient real quick, okay? We got fluids going. Okay, about every five seconds, and you can give us a squeeze, okay? My partner here is going to get on some of that medication. One to 10,000. Yeah, what's your name? Can you tell me your name? Rosa, I see you, Medic One. Medic One, Rosa, I see you. Are you in Indiana order for 3A OSM ambulances in that airship? Momento, okay. Sir, how do you do? 3A OSM ambulances, three minutes out. Airship, four minutes. Oh, this Okay, listening to lung sounds. Is there anything? Lindsay, how old are you, Lindsay? Okay. okay, what city are you guys, So, we got compressions going for that. Uh, monitor shows the I'll be right back. Take a Ma'am. Hi. Can you talk to me? What's your name? Maria. Maria? Tienes dolor? Por aquí. What about your hips? Cuanto, cuanto minutes for the okay. dolor? It's not working. All right. Para hijo? Go. My jewel okay. settings. What, what card okay. Uno you? momento, we'll be right with you, okay? Okay. 20 jewels will be I'm going to discharge the monitor. Feel for a pulse with compressions on the break. I'm going to split your shoulder for you real quick, okay? Yeah. I'm just going to take a look at it. I see my monitor? Hey, sis, copy that. Continue compressions and disarm mm -hmm. my charge. And I'm going to get my... How are you doing here, Garrett? Here. Just working the coders. All right. Yep. Hey, where's our regular blood pressure cuff? Uh, it's right over there in the Atlantic. Point one epi on board, as you saw, 10,000 concentration. In two minutes of CPR, and continue. Can you open up your Turnover mouth? I got was compression. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I don't see anything right now. Okay. Pelvic and, um... I know, I'm sorry. We're going to take a Where was the secondary from? Sorry, I wasn't on there. I should give you a little bit of a cut in your face. Am I not going to be pretty? Check people's... A lot of blood in her mouth. Okay, at this time, I can start checking it. Try to 
suction unit. Uh, yeah. Am I able to clear it with the suction unit? Can you stick your tongue out? Offset pressure. Stick your tongue out. As in so far? Uh, uh, okay. Where's that bag? Okay. Uh, Where's that bag? Uh, Where's that bag? Uh, Where's that bag? Uh, okay. Okay. Here, here. Took a banana tunnel for this. And the trometer face, is she still actively bleeding or is it? Just bleeding. And just reassessing a neuro real quick. Okay. Response. I'll try suctioning. Again. Responsive. Any Checking pupils. Nice. Yeah. Eyes are pearl. Okay. Any decap UTLS on the head? And pre-charge my monitor. And uh, take good care of your friend. Take care of your friend. I'm going to go check back on her. Okay. I'll be right back. Full compressions with his. Both of the compressions. I got her. Ma'am. Ma'am. How's it going? Can you hear me? Still breathing okay? Can you tell me your name? My next dose. Epinephrine. Maria, what, what city are you in right now? Uh, como se llama? 90, copy that. I'm a good idea. Cuanto años? Alrighty. So do you just keep doing what you're doing? Okay, we'll be right with you, okay? Compliance with the bag, am I having any Hey, how are we doing here? I need an airway on this kid. You need what? I need an airway on this kid. Okay. We're using the monitor. Here. Uh, ET? Yeah, if we can. Let's get an airway. How about you sit We got assessment on here. Everyone's being treated, ma'am. Do I have a pulse on her? All right, guys, make sure our compressions are good. We're looking to be back. Any breathing? Okay. Is it? Should we have good recoil okay. on that chest as you're doing some right. work? Good job. Ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Hi. What's your name? Entitled reading. Maria. Up here, okay. we do have an entitled. Sounds like. Okay. Um, Tiana Stilohari. Consistently the whole time? Consistently persistent. Two rounds of epinephrine. Okay. One, one milligram, one attempt. Deloren Cerveza. Oh. No. And push off. Okay. Have we uh, pulse rhythm checks? Yeah. Okay. Now we're two minutes. I'm gonna check your blood pressure, okay, Maria? It's about 30 seconds. Next pulse rhythm. Hey, Grody. Yeah. Let's prioritize this patient right here. Let me just get a quick blood pressure okay. and then I'll move on. That's time. Yep. Okay. Is that it? Oh my lanta. All right. Okay, Sam McGill, if you'll. Go over here, you'll be speaking with Dr. Dickinson, and we'll take care of your gear. Please welcome to the stage, Jim's medical editor, Dr. Ed Dickinson. Sam McGuell, as soon as you're ready, come on over. Let's debrief real quick. You're good. Right here. No, you're right. Uh, three seats. It's okay. <laughs> One, two, three. You're good. Okay. Great job, guys. What, what, what was your biggest challenge here? What was your what your thought come up as a team leader coming up on that stage? You saw the scenario. You saw the mechanism. What was your what was your thought as you walked on that stage? Uh, lack of our uh, on scene equipment. You mean as far as backup or? Minim well, just having minimal on a car on a call like this uh, in our first in district, we would have a minimum of probably three engines and multiple ambulances there with uh, the ability to focus on one patient and then having the gear to not have to jump back and forth from what's multiple critical patients. Yeah. Having one monitor, you know, um, work, working a code while you have somebody else's decompensating. And yeah, it's a real challenge. I mean, at least where I'm coming from in Pennsylvania right now, our manpower situation is really low. We're seeing more and more situations where we're, we're really stretching it to the maximum. I think you guys did a good job spreading out your ALS gear and stuff like that. Who do you think the most challenging patient was for you guys? I mean, you spent a lot of time on the kid, right? The, the pediatric cardiac arrest back here. What were your thoughts on that? It's, it's definitely a call that, that What's it? I think is, I think practicing in the field, you see a kid and naturally your, your first inclination is to divest or invest as much time as you can into that, re, uh, that life, right? Right, I think we, we tend to really go to the kids and, and that was one of the challenges here. I think you did a good job triage and the kid in the bassinet was fine. You, you, you tagged that appropriately, it seemed to be well, but you know, it, it's almost like a veterinary assessment. Like, it looks okay to me. I got a lot of other stuff going on. And you did a good job, I think, setting up the resources to keep an eye on your femur and, and the child on the far side. You know, it's a real, real challenge. Until you're up here, you really have no sense of how, yeah. how tough this is yeah. really going to be. But you guys did a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, another hand for those guys. Come on, step off. You're good. 
Thanks, Bob. Take it. So as always, what I like to do in between each one of these sessions is do an educational component that links into the scenario we just saw. And we've been doing this for decades now, it seems like, at least 15 years. And we never really talked about mass casualty incidents kind of from a logistical standard sort of way in which we approach mass casualty and what the systems are. So the first talk I want to have in between this team and the next team is about mass casualty and caveats of how we treat them. All right, so national triage schemes, basically we know the basics, right? We know that when we do a triage, we have a mass casualty, we're going to be doing tagging. We're going to have green tags for uh, patients who are the walking wounded. We're going to have yellow tags for patients who need uh, urgent care. And then high critical patients are going to be uh, red tags. And then black tags for those who are dead or those who are, we can't save given our resources on the scene. Over time, though, and that really dates back to the early, late 1960s, or early 1970s, but over time, a bunch of other triage systems started to emerge because the thought was, it's not simply about tagging people, but should we be doing something as we move through a large field? And we're talking about large MCIs, 10, 15, 20, 30 patients. How do we really approach a, more, a, a greater expanse that clearly outstrips our resources, and is there any intervention we can do to potentially save somebody? as we move through, as the triage person moving through. And there are all these different systems here, and probably I grew up with the START system, which is the next slide, which is kind of um, a fairly complex system, but it gets the basics done. Again, black for patients who are um, expired, red for immediate, high priority, got to get them off the scene, need immediate intervention, yellow for significantly injured or ill patients that need to get off the scene, but they can wait for an hour or two. And then the green patients who are the walking wounded, who in a lot of places may end up on a school bus being transported or maybe even released from the scene. The challenge is that we need to all speak the same language in regards to trauma triage when it comes to an MCI. And that's really why the federal government got a group together and said, let's talk about best practices. There are currently nine or 10 systems out there, um, including the START system and these other ones that address pediatric patients and things like that. So what the government decided to do is put a panel of experts together, the CDC put them together, and said, what's our best practice? And what they came up with was the SALT triage system, which stands for SORT, ASSESS, Life-saving interventions, treatment, and transport, SALT. And we should be thinking nationally as moving towards that as our standard. So if we have an MCI and we're triaging in Wisconsin, we're going to triage it the same way in upstate New York using the SALT system. The government looked at this and the, the feds in regards to funding and things like that want to make sure all these things are compliant with best practices, and this system is. And it's been endorsed by the American College of Emergency Physicians, the uh, American College of Surgeons, Committee on Trauma, the National Association of EMS Physicians, Trauma Society. This is really where the buy-in is. And what this system is, is like all good trauma systems and triage systems, there's the big sword at the beginning. You walk up to that scene, you say, anybody can hear my voice? I want you to walk over there. I know in my MCIs I've done over the years, like the classic school bleacher collapse is like my, my usual nightmare, where there are all these kids in the middle of a football field after the bleacher collapses, and a whole bunch of them are milling around. There's some really injured kids in there, and there's some uninjured people. That first big sort. Everybody can hear my voice, can walk. I, I want you over there in the end zone at that far end. So you sort out that first group. And then in the salt triage system, the next step is to say, anybody can hear my voice, but you can't walk. Give me a wave. So we're triaging right away. So there's something there. Those are probably going to be maybe our intermediate patients. And then you look at whoever's left. And the way we prioritize that in the SALT triage is we go to each one of those patients. And because we're going to do immediate life-saving life interventions, what they figured out was here are really what those are. Major hemorrhage control. So when you walk up and you assess that patient, they're bleeding badly, put a tourniquet on them, get direct pressure by a bystander or something like that, but control major bleeding. Open the airway. You can put an oral pharyngeal airway in if you want. And the pediatric part of SALT is if it's a child, consider giving two breaths. Open the airway up, give two breaths because of, if it's a kid. Chest decompression if it's an obvious tension pneumothorax because it's been proven effective and, and, and a life-saving intervention in these scenarios. And then if you're dealing with like a mass casualty that has to do with a, a bioterrorism, say a nerve agent, you can deploy your Mark ones. You can use uh, auto injectors, and that's your intervention. And then you move down to the algorithm. So what does that really look like when you look at these slides? At the very top is that first big sort, right? So it says step one, sort and global sorting. First off, can you walk? Obviously, they're going to be lowest priority. We're going to assess them last. Can you wave to me? OK, they're still alive. They heard me call out. We're going to get to them second. And then the first priority is going to be those who are still or have obvious severe injuries who can't do any of those things. And then we put them as an algorithm. We do our immediate life-saving steps, again, controlling hemorrhage, the auto-injector, decompression of the chest, opening the airway, two breaths of the child, and then we reassess. Are they breathing or not after we did that? If they're not breathing, they're dead, they're tagged black. We move on. 
If they are breathing, we go back and we assess those things that we just tried to check out. Um, are they obeying commands? Are they awake? Um, do you have any if there's a peripheral pulse present, um, are, is there bleeding controlled? Um, and if, are there any respiratory distress? If they look fine, that's great. If any of those things are going on, you need to make that critical decision. Is that a patient I can work right now and make a red? Do I have the resources available? If they're still having hemorrhage issues, if they still have difficulty breathing, right? Can I, do I have the resource? And if I have the resources, they're gonna become my red patients, my immediate patients, because they're the sickest patients on this field that I have in front of me. If you don't have the resources, you're gonna have to tag them black. I think one of the real challenges up here with this case is that some, in a cardiac arrest situation, even though it's a relatively small mass casualty with five or six patients, you gotta think about when you're putting a lot of resource into cardiac arrest, it's really a challenge. And it's, in this scenario, really, really hard because it's a kid. It was a 97-year-old woman ejected who went to cardiac arrest, we'd probably be a lot more quickly and, and say, okay, it's a black tag, we do what we could, we gotta move on to our other resources because we're very limited. That's one of the real challenges in this scenario. But anyway, finishing this out, if there's no signs of major trauma, we can make them a green. However, it's like the lady over here with an open femur fracture, she has a major injury, all the other things look okay, but we're gonna make her a yellow because she's high priority because of her injury. And that's a great looking bone out of your thigh, by the way. Very nice, okay. All right, so there are two massive, classic uh, exceptions to the MCI. The first is blast injuries, and this is an Israeli bus um, uh, terrorist ap, uh, episode. The big thing about blast injuries is that a lot of patients, especially when they're close to the epicenter, if that blast is inside a confined space, is it blows out their eardrums. The fundamental problem then is, I want everyone to go this way, in the big sort, and all they're hearing is, because their eardrums are blown out. What's interesting about that also is if you look at trauma triage and advanced military triage, if they can't hear because of the blast, that means they were close enough to the epicenter from the primary blast injury, they're high triage priority. So those who can't walk, it's incredibly hard to sort them out, so that's a real challenge. But be aware of that being a real issue if you have a blast injury sort of scenario with your MCI. The other is this. This is my uh, hometown just a couple days ago and the black clouds were coming the other directions but I couldn't get the picture going the other direction so we had to do this one. But anyway, springtime, softball, baseball game, little league, lightning strike. Lightning strike hits that back, that, the uh, backstop there. You suddenly have 15 people down. Normally we don't work cardiac arrest. So if we walked into this scenario today and someone was in cardiac arrest, we wouldn't even start working them. They had a patient who went into cardiac arrest which made it a little more difficult from a triage sort of standpoint. But the real difference here is in a lightning strike, we know that if you survive the lightning strike initially, you're probably gonna survive. And if you're in cardiac arrest, you're in cardiac arrest because you're in V-fib or, or pulseless V-tac. So it's the one exception where, for standard MCI, where we normally say you're dead and moving on, black tag, if it's a lightning strike, you go to the cardiac arrest, you get an AED on them, and you bring them back because you can save them. Because again, high likelihood the other people are gonna do fine, or relatively fine, and not get you in trouble. So think about those two. So again, I, I wanna make a big picture about making MCI triage a, a part of your daily EMS operations. They, they occur fairly commonly, they're, not, they're, you know, they're unusual but not rare events. And one of my mentors, John Politis, who was my EMS chief and was my senior paramedic up in New York, always said you can't speak English 364 days of a year and expect to speak fluent French on day 365. If you don't practice this, I say to my crews all the time, where are the triage tags? And they go, under the seat, I think? Right? We know where that stuff is and pull it out. So what I really would make a kick for to say is that we really want to, like for instance, with, three, with maybe four patients, more than three patients, go through the process. Assign a triage person. When you pull up on that scene, make your partner the triage officer so they can go through and do the assessments. Really, really helpful to sort that. So again, in small size instance, it's basically really quick, an EMS command, a triage officer. In medium-sized instances, maybe with six or 12 patients, you're obviously gonna expand that out. At that point, you're gonna probably have a, a treatment sector. So you're gonna have, add a triage officer, treatment sector, and a transport officer. And again, in these large-scale MCIs, it's game on, right? It's unified command with the EMS command uh, part of that, setting up the sectors of triage treatment, setting up the different zones, having people assigned, and it's, et cetera. So again, my point is, we get it when it's 35 patients, it's an MCI. But every day, think about, wow, there are five patients here, and a lot of them are okay, and a lot of them are walking wounded. Let's go through the process, let's tag them. Let's get the stuff out, let's put the strips on them. Are they yellow, are they, are they red, are they greens? A couple quick caveats for MCI management. The first 15 minutes set the tone. If you get it right in those first 15 minutes, you got good command and control, things go well. But when you set up a cruddy sort of, I, I think I got this, I don't have this, like you have no staging officer, and all of a sudden, all 15 ambulances you called are now jammed in and no one can get out. 
If you don't set that precedence early on, it's really hard to undo stuff. And a lot of the big MCIs have been done, they've had to do timeouts to just stop everything, reset and restart. So again, the good chance up front, if you do a really good assessment of your resource and the scene, you can probably mitigate that to some extent. Never underestimate the value of a good staging officer. It drives people crazy when I'm on a scene with a mass casualty when, when I say to a really good paramedic, I want you in the street making sure all the ambulances go down the end of the cul-de-sac and they're pointing out that way and make sure everybody leaves their keys in the vehicles. And they go, but I want to go in there and triage. I want to go to, I don't care. I want you in the street. I want you out there and doing that because we forget about that. It can really bollocks up a scene. Never underestimate the value of an EMS physician on the scene. If you're lucky enough to have a good EMS doc, your medical director who's savvy, not a pain in the ass, but someone who can really help you on a scene, okay, and they're different varieties, we get that, okay, but having the ability to treat and release, to make those hard decisions, to tap you on the shoulder and say, that kid's dead, let's move on, buddy. You did a great job, let's move on to the next patient. That can really add value uh, in systems, so I, I encourage that. And then um, <laughs> when Dr. Cohn came on as our bereaved mother um, who saw the children, the curveball of the medical patient, not only for your, the people on the scene, that someone suddenly has an MI in the middle of a scenario like this, a trauma scenario, but at the same time, it may be a rescuer who suddenly goes down. So always think about rehab and things like that in prolonged uh, situations. All righty. So we'll talk about that on the next slide, and we'll get back to the games. Thank you so much. All crew members, get to your positions. The second competing team is Sussex County EMS. We're Sussex County EMS. This is Chaz, Kristen, Steve, and I'm Austin. And we've got the three keys to successes. The mom, the dinosaur, and mustaches. Engine 1, Rescue 14, Ambulance 9, Medic 1, Battalion Chief 2, Auto Accident with Entrapment, at 1, Bobby Halton Way, Engine 1 on scene with 1 trapped, timeout, 1730. One, two, three, four, five, six so far. Six so far. One pediatric. Yep, six so far, one pediatric. All right. All right. One, two. All right, you check her out. One, Hi. two, three, four. Go, four. Go, go, go. Is this your nephew? What do you got over here? Four. Reference I see. Medic, medic one. We have, we have four patients at this time. One still in the vehicle. Heart rate. Rapid heart rate. Hi, ma'am. How are you doing? <laughs> so I see medic one. Copy. Four patients. One still in the vehicle. Uh, what's the status on the baby? Austin. Dying, it's alert. One priority one on okay. conscious. Can you tell me what happened? Priority two. One priority one. One priority two. Correct. And one and two. For a walk. Okay. And, and what are your is the baby breathing nowhere. adequately? Kristen, what are your and statuses? Hi, ma'am. What's your name? Nancy. Nancy, I'm Austin. I'm one of the county paramedics. How you doing? Oh, my head. Okay. Any gross, obvious okay. bleeding? Hey guys. How old is he? Three. Four. 
You got good radio. You guys have a four-year-old? Anything other than your head hurt? Uh, okay, what does he look like? How's the chip okay. feel? Got it. How old are you? Short hair. All right, 21. What about you, hon? What All right, you got? just lay back. Just lay back. Try not to move. Do you know what happened? All right. Do you have any allergies to medicine? All right, just relax. What's okay. your last uh, oral injury? All right, you thank you. Uh, okay. What medicines do you take on okay. a daily basis? Preston. Yeah. I need a PD kit now. Okay. Do you have a four-year-old? I do. Okay. Okay. All right. Can you take this over to my Sounds partner? Sounds like very equal and by Iraq, laterally. Yep. Can you look it's over on the other me? side? My partner's taking Open your eyes respiration wide. Wide. Open your eyes wide. Okay. Those are equal and reactive. Open your mouth up. Take that. Open Take that bag. Yes, she's out. crying. Bleeding. Unequal. Okay. Okay. All right. I've got a head injury over here, guys. It has pain through the chest uh, where I'm pressing. Similar, we'll get you, no. okay? Check in the belly. Capital. Everybody's hurt. Okay. Everybody's hurt. Can right. you move this foot at all? Can you, can, you, okay. can you feel me touching you? Right. Which is leg is that? Do you guys have a saber? Which leg is this? Or anything like that. Okay. Can you, you don't have this hand. Good. Let go. Squeeze this hand. Good. Okay. I'm going to check for a pulse. Absolutely. I'm checking for a rate. Bleeding is as controlled as I can I'm looking at her. Respiratory okay. rate. Twenty two. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank Who's you. Marissa? Uh, I'm Marissa. Okay. I have a red and a green over here. Who's Lexi? She was there. Got it. All right. I'm gonna cover this up. She was. She was right That's straight. I'm gonna check your blood pressure. Okay. Yes. It's. I'm also. Uh, we're gonna get you to surgery as soon as we can. Okay. 100 over 70. Okay, yeah, my good. partner's working on him right now. I'm not sure of the All status right, I'm right now, but we'll on your arm, okay? Okay. These, These guys are actually. Don't you keep holding no, this guys how long to extricate? I don't know. My partner is working on him. Okay. He's going to be okay, okay? We're going to simulate yes. that that's on. Medic one to command. What, what the status do you have on transporting units? Like 30 years experience, so I think he'll be all right. Okay. Medic one from command, you have an 11 minute ETA for your incoming unit. Okay. Okay. Yes. Medic one to command, I'm going to need at least one helicopter aviation to a trauma center. And then I'm going to need at least uh, three or four other ALS transporting units. Do you have any medical history? Copy, requesting one airship and four additional ALS ambulances. Feel a pinch here. One, two, three, pinch. I'm going to check your blood yeah, sugar, okay? It's going to require surgery. All right, Are your you blood, blood sugar is good. No. Okay. Are you allergic to anything? No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm hey, Steve, how you doing over there? When's I got. The last time you ate or Got to put them on. Okay. What do you have, Steve? Comment. I have a priority one pediatric patient, semi-responsive. Okay. All right. I have a priority, priority one to two to distract the. Walking down the road. All right. Kristen, how are you doing there? I have a red and a green. I have an open tip fib. All right. I have the the a transporting unit on the way. Yes, Do you have the monitor? Do you yeah. need the monitor? I have a monitor. Can you still hear me? All right. Breathing. No. Okay. Not at this Do I have any firefighters that can back help me? Rest, we're gonna Anybody that's BLS? Okay. No, I think your nephew's Sense. all right. I'm not sure. That any firefighters or BLS around that can help me? Kristen, I need a bag valve mask if you have the airway bag. Steve has the airway bag. Steve, I need an EVM. Can you, try can you go a little bit yes. under and There's get a lot the EVM of and then come over and breathe for her? There's Doesn't a lot of providers changing. with a lot of patients on scene, okay? I'm going to go ahead and insert an oral airway. I'm not sure, okay. but I know my partner's with him right now. I'm measuring the size. We're going to go ahead and put that yeah, in. I'm going to give you a Does she a take the oral Kristen. airway? Kristen. Yeah. No gag Can reports. I have a PD collar? All right. Yeah. Go ahead and continue rechecking the pulses. You were struck hey, by a car, correct? Yeah. Okay. okay. Here, can you bring that to okay. my partner, Steve? Yeah, the car. All right. What's your name? Are you able to walk? Hi, Mom. My name's Steve. I'm one of the paramedics from Sussex County. Can you try and walk over to me? I know, but we want to keep you in ceasefire as long as we can. Give me a try and walk over to me. Still as possible. Okay. But it's my leg that's broken. How's she breathing? I understand that, but since you've had such a bad injury. No respiratory effort? Okay. I've got one. I need an Respiratory arrest, Steve. I need a monitor if you're done with it. I can spot with it. I have a so she is not breathing right now, but we're taking care of her. We think she hurt her head pretty bad. 
All right. Take What's your name? name? Got it. I undo the strap somehow. All right. Okay. All right. Hold the hey, Steve, the I need that airway bag. Can can you go and get the uh, intubation kit out of it for me? Please? Yep, we'll get it. Okay, do me a favor. Do you have any pain in your head, neck, or back? Take this. Okay. My back hurts. Okay. Back? Yes, please. All right, why don't you just lay back just straight on the face, ground? Your Your shoulder. Okay. And what's your name? Monica. All right, I'm just going to have you sit right. there. I need this hooked up. She's okay. Yep. What's your name? Excuse me. Lindsay, and how old are you? All right. Can you open your okay. mouth? Okay. Do you have any, any pain sounds. anywhere? All right. I Do you don't take any medicines every day? All right. What about any pain no. here? No. Okay. Absent. Deep breath. What happened before this? Child no. breathing at all? Yep. Any trouble breathing? I need okay. a PDBDM. All right. Austin, I need a PB, PDBDM right now. All right. I need a pediatric PBM out of the Okay, I'll try bag. to get an update hey, as soon as Right by you. Okay. It's right by you. I'm just going to look at your belly. You have okay. the airway bag. Any pain? Shit, I do. Pain uh, here. Hide my English. Here. Start bagging that child, please. All right. So, so no, right now we're going to help her breathe a little How bit, about okay? This? No, not at all. All right. No pulse. Um, with fluid. Feel me touching Continue here. ventilating the go child. Let's see if we get that. To improve. Okay, what about in here? We're going to find the uh, spot that yep. we're going to here. Any pain down here? How about... Austin, I now have okay. a pain. Can you write, down? Can you more write down your information Wiggle for me? And if you know hers, can you know change. All right. write Anything her information I, I too? It's okay, you can get blood that. on my pen. It's been bloody before. All right. Austin. Can you still wiggle these fingers? Yep. We're just going to give her some medicine. No, Find a rest no. All right. Are or are we going? I'm going to give it two minutes, see if I have any change. Can you start working on writing your information okay. down okay. for me? I'm just going to put normal saline on this. It was not hurt. It's going to be at a rate right now. It was not hurt. Can, no, one, no, can you hold this up? Okay. Can you ventilate? Uh, so I'm not right for you. Is it easy? Down. I need you to hold that up. Yeah, also, can we get this blood pressure? Yeah. I'm going to pull out hand heavy. I'm going to use your hand heavy. Hi. 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 How old is the child again? Bye. Bye. Oh, I right. no, you'll think it'll be fine. The blood pressure's going. All right, sir, I'm going to go ahead and intubate her. Okay? Baby, she still has Is she still breathing okay? A good breath there. You're breathing about 10. Awesome. Just confirming you're not. Hi, what's your name? Been hit by anything. Perfect. Five of cuffs. Baby has not been hit. Excuse me. Hola. Hola. Hi, yo sé. ¿Dónde está mi otro hijo? Oh, any change with any compressions? Any change? Uh, all the child at all? Any no, we have bleeding here. That's not a one to command. Is that police for uh, crowd control? What happens? What happens? Tell me what's happening for me. Come on, Rose. I see. Copy. Seeking for crowd control is immediate need. No, fala español. No, fala portuguese. El señor. No, no portuguese. Español. All right, sir. I'm gonna swap in with you. No, no, yo soy de México. All right, we're gonna hyper extend that. Just try to keep your neck straight. Go ahead and pull that OPA out. Does anybody translate? Does anybody speak? Spanish. Do you have anybody on the scene that can speak Spanish? Okay, I'm going to get you some pain medicine. Okay. I think that's where she went. That's that con mi hijo. Eh? Si? Eso es mi hijo. I understand. Yeah, I was just saying, do you want to switch? Let's switch. Please. Go. Do you have any pain medicine? Hold this dude for me. Pain medicine, oh, IV and pain. Good buddy. I don't have any meds. Okay, I, have a, I have a little one in a rest. Hey, can hey. you can you hey, grab his hey. uh you'll think of fentanyl, the ketamine, and an IV set out of his bag. When he's okay. done it, oh. he's gonna yeah. go ahead and inflate the cup. Nope, we're gonna have you lay. Pull the back down. Do I have another firefighter over here? Side that PBM, do you still have it? It's got inline catography on it, so we're gonna hook that up. Are you allergic to anything? Let's, <gasps> All right. Let's hook that in. All right. Oh, Go ahead yeah, and give no, a couple no. quick deep breaths. I'm going to keep you here because we don't listen. want any, any more change with the little one. Blood going into Checking your... the belly. Any change with the little one? Oh, Thank you. 
Clear, clear. I'm not gonna negative. All right, this is a good two. I mean, it's in the black bed wrap. I have an MCI. Yeah, we put a breathing tube in her. We're breathing for her. Okay, we're gonna get her over to the hospital as soon as a helicopter gets here. She's gonna go to a level one trauma facility. Mom, with neurogenic capabilities. Okay. My name's Steve. What's your name? Okay. What's your name, Senor? We're gonna recycle that blood pressure. Maria? Should be automatically Would you go every five But if it's not, See? I'll hit recycle again. Yeah. No, you're okay. Spare Get a blood pressure. Thank you. All right, that tube's secure. I just need that blood pressure's recycling. Okay. He's going with that for me. What's going on? Gracias. Again. Keep this arm straight. Scale one to ten. How bad? I'm gonna go ahead and put a uh, blanket over her to keep her warm, and I'm gonna reassess to check. Uh, Can she describe any the chest changes pain? after no, my she has a lot of there? Center of her chest. Okay. Senora. All right, checking anything. So I'm going to start no gross IV. bleeding. Mucho right. dolor aquí. Full chest rise and fall with Mucho the bagging. Rise. Checking the belly, okay. still soft, oh, non tender. So you check and the you're pelvis. Not allergic I don't anything, feel correct? anything on it there. I need going down to her monitor. legs. She's not awake no. right now, honey. Have one. Okay. If we she hurt her head pretty bad. Checking for not. pulses. Good pulses. One. Coming and down I can through. ask you to bring my gear that's there towards pulses. Checking her hands. Tristan, how are you doing over there? Silver blanket, please. Tristan. Tristan McAfee. Tristan. How are you doing over there? We're good. I'm going to do pain medicine and get a full set of vitals. Okay. She has an open. You still have one priority one and. And a green. And a green. Okay. One priority one, one priority three. Bleeding's control, Priority three so at the moment, one priority four after two rounds of CPR, no change. Okay. And I've got a priority one here. Yes. Where's my. What do you got on yours over there, Austin? I have a head right, injury let me get here. Blood pressure. I need a 12 lead if I can. Are you done with the monitor? You need a what? Or need, I need a 12 lead. Are you done a with the monitor lead? or you need it? Yeah, we can pass this on to you. I'm recycling that blood pressure one more time. All right, perfect. Here, Thank you. Give me your give me your 12 lead cables and we can just switch yep. it off so I can keep my end title and pulse oximetry. Got it. All right, 112 over 84. I want to keep the end title and pulse ox for her and I want to put the 12 lead doing? on that patient okay. so okay. I can split the monitor. You're good there, bagging. The let me know if anything changes. If any vomit okay, starts to happen or anything, let me know, okay? No. I'm not leaving her. I'm staying right with Thank you, okay? You. I'm just going to help my partner out. There's other people that are hurt here, too. You want me to what all hurts you? Just your left her? shoulder? There's your okay. Tables. Is this what hurts? Can I take your sweatshirt? The way I would normally do it? Okay. Good. Leave those to the side. Right. Is that the only thing that's hurting you right now? I don't know. Your face? Were you in the car with your friend here? There's your four lead, there's your 12 lead. Okay, I'm just gonna take a look at you. Let's move this over here. Medicina? All right, checking for anything here, checking your neck. Does that hurt at all? I'm a lot of peanut. Okay. Okay. Oh, high, high I'm gonna put pressure. a C collar okay. on you, on Steve. I need please. another C collar. Can you, you just look straight on? ahead? This is gonna go okay. here. Um, yeah, Measure that's your size here. 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 Okay. Yeah, good. Can, keep your head straight for pressure. me. This is just gonna keep her, your neck straight. Her, okay. Her so let's go ahead and put this back. on you. Kind of stuck. Okay. Don't mind me. Okay. Yes, yeah, stuck. Okay. Just look right ahead. I know your shoulder hurts. It's okay. We'll get it taken care of. Any pain through your back here? All right. No, do you have any trouble breathing? No, good, okay. How are you doing with the bagging? No changes? She's not doing anything else? Okay, good. You know how Deep much breath you weigh? In and out. You're helping your friend for me, yeah. which is really good. Do you have any more packs of electrodes? Well, you're equal and bilaterally. I'm gonna press on your stomach, okay? All right, All right. tell me if anything hurts. I'm sorry, any pain Senora. through there? Just the shoulder, okay, let's take this off. All right, your shoulder looks okay here. Can you feel me touching your hand? Can you have a pulse with that? Yes. Good. All right. Anything through here where I'm touching, or it's just up here? Okay. All right. I'm gonna have you hold it like that for me. Okay. That's time. Let's hear it for Sussex County. Okay, Sussex, if you can just oh, like leave your equipment Sorry. Yeah, thank you. and make no, your way over here to the other side of the stage, Dr. Dickinson is waiting for you, and our crew will pick up your equipment, and you'll find your equipment you so over much. on this side of the stage, okay? Hey, your Portuguese is not too bad. Though. No, my Portuguese isn't too bad. Please welcome back Dr. Ed Dickinson. Thanks. Thank you. 
so much. Get this on so I don't blind you like last year. Yeah, let's do hey, that. Doc. Good to see you, Doc. See you. Hey, Doc. Good to see you guys. Hello. All right, pretty uh, exciting. You guys uh, are all sweating. That's a good sign. Didn't, didn't take us laying down. So one thing I noticed with your team is you did some manipulation where the patients were. You moved patients around the stage, and you had patients who were probably not as critically injured assisting in care. Tell me about your mindset about that, is about manipulating the scene, and as opposed to treating everybody just where you find them, moving patients to a convenient thing based on your resources. What are your thoughts there? I think moving everybody to a localized area or at least a more visible area for us um, really helps with the team communication and the dynamic of you know being able to keep everything controlled in a chaotic environment oh God. Um, yeah and able to reassess, yeah. reassess everybody as needed in the most efficient manner yeah, more efficient use yeah. of the limited equipment we have yeah and for you guys don't notice this these this year the teams have one bls bag one als bag and one airway bag so that's all they have for resource, which is pretty typical for what we all carry in our animals is that's what we bring in every single day and trying to stockpile it because it's hard to get from there to there to there to there and back and stuff like that. So I think that was a good, really good use of that time. What about providing care of the patient inside? I think you had the patient inside the vehicle. Yeah. Do you have, what's your, when do you start to think about doing care in the vehicle beyond the basic assessment and things like that? When do you think about starting intervening while, while the patient's being extricated? Yeah. What's your thought there? I mean, you have to do the basics first, right? So I have to figure out, is she a head injury? Is she intoxicated? Is she hypoglycemic? Um, so I think doing a really good exam in the car and working on a blood sugar and doing some just basic external vital signs without use of the monitor um, kind of helps for that. And then obviously if the time allows, you know, you're trying to coordinate with the fire department of how long is it going to take to extricate her, et cetera. Um, if time allows, obviously, that's a good time to get an IV started and, um, you know, put on some oxygen or get a nasal cannula that reads end title on her. Um, Obviously, I didn't get to that point in right. the car, you're pretty, but... You pretty rapid extrication, got the door popped, got the patient out pretty yeah. quickly and stuff like that. And obviously, the patient, realistically, a lot of times we take them from one position to another, they decompensate. Mm -hmm. And she got sick really fast when she got outside of the doors. And that's not a, uncommon when we change that body position, yeah, the kind of internally that. tamponade and stuff. Right. Great job, guys. All right, All right. thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Doc. Doc. Appreciate it. Yep, either way. Right, so the whole basis of our, uh, of our scenario today is really about car versus pedestrians. Obviously, the car crashed themselves, people were ejected from the vehicle, but we had three patients, the two kids and the woman with the femur who were pedestrians who were struck by the car. So I thought we'd take a couple minutes to talk about car versus pedestrian, talk about some of the major in injuries we see in that sort of scenario. Okay. And this should advance, there we go. So I'll show you a video. If you ever want really good videos about people getting hit by cars, look on the internet and, and search Russian people hit by cars because there is this incredible um, wealth of videos because they all have dash cams in Russia. So here's the video, and I want to run this because this is the classic scenario, and we'll talk about it. As gruesome as that is to watch, that is the classic car versus pedestrian scenario. Everything that child just underwent is what we see the majority of the time in any reasonable speed crash. Um, it's interesting, generally, when patients get hit, when human beings get hit because their center of gravity, they get, tend to get rolled off the hood and then off the vehicle. So let's talk about the epidemiology of, it's really interesting about car versus pedestrians, about 7,000 fatalities a year. Some of these are firefighters and rescue personnel too, because as you know, every year, a certain number of firefighters are, are killed on the highways. About 100,000 non-fatal ED visits for car versus pedestrians as well. 46% of these crashes, when there's a car and a pedestrian involved, involve alcohol, whether it's the person making a bad decision about stepping into traffic or it's the driver who's highly intoxicated or intoxicated or impaired as they're driving. So it's a big portion, half these cases, involve being impaired. Um, not surprisingly, the faster the vehicle is going, the more likely contact is to occur because you can't slow down and there's more energy involved so more severely injured the patient tends to be. And in the national trauma triage scenario, as you know, pedestrian struck, pedestrian struck, run over at more than 20 miles per hour gets you to the highest level of trauma center available by the trauma triage guidelines. So it is a real phenomenon and these patients are almost uniformly really hurt. So we talk about, um, it's interesting, most fatalities occur outside of crosswalks. I was in New York City last weekend, and this is the West uh, Side Highway. It looked good, but there's a sign there that says, don't cross here. It looked really good to me at the time, because I was like late for dinner, but then things changed quickly and badly. 
Now, again, the scenario saying that most accidents happen outside of crosswalks is almost a, a really kind of lame statistic, because think about the billions of miles of highway in the United States, and think about how many of them have crosswalks. So obviously, you're more apt to get hit outside a crosswalk, because the open highway is the, the highway. Do, do crosswalks help? Do these signs help? Maybe they do. I'm not 100% sure, but they warn patients, you know, warn drivers that are going into a, into a, a crosswalk area. So car versus pedestrian, the classic three impacts are these. We'll go look at that video again in a second. First is the bumper impact, as the car hits the person. The second, because the force brings the patient, the vehicle's still moving up over the hood, and then they tend to roll off the vehicle and then onto the street. So in that mechanism, lower extremity injuries, chest, head, abdominal injuries, and then the worst case scenario is they get hit again, second time by another vehicle or they're dragged by another vehicle. So here's that video again, and again, exactly what we just saw in that scenario. The first thing that happens is this poor kid gets hit by the bumper, then he gets thrown up over the, da over the uh, hood, and then off to the side. It's interesting, there's a lot of studies being done with like deer collisions, moose collisions. Uh, in Australia, they have um, kangaroo collisions, and sometimes some of those animals go up and into the vehicles more than down and off. A lot of times you'll find car going th deer going through windshields. It doesn't tend to happen that much with human beings. So again, car versus pedestrian, the extent of injuries is greatly affected by the speed of the vehicle. The classic injuries, lower extremity, chest, and bad head trauma. And survival um, from the primary impact may be obviated, like, oh, thank God, he just got hit and rolled off the hood, then he hit by a tractor trailer, and that's a bad day. So again, impact, tib-fib injuries, very common. Uh, here's a good example of that from a patient we had not too long ago. Uh, tib-fib fracture from the impact of the bumper. Compartment syndrome, very common here. So make sure you triage up. If you got hit, and you say, oh, just a lower extremity fracture, maybe not a trauma center. Compartment syndrome is a real concern in these mechanisms, so make sure they're going to a trauma center. This is an incredibly tragic case I had probably now 25 years ago. It was a three-year-old walking across the street, and the bumper hit him in the head. It was an SUV, and you can see the cervical spine is disconnected from the skull. It's what we call an atlanto-occipital dislocation. And actually what kills these patients is you would think it'd be a spinal cord injury, but actually what kills them is they rip their vasculature. The blood vessels get ripped and that's why they pass away. Classic example, this is my hometown. This is a Honda that hit a school kid waiting for the school bus. Had their backpack on, and when you look at this, we'll talk through these arrows as we go. So the first impact is down here. You see the shiny spot on the bumper? It literally, when the kid hit him, it buffed off the, 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 the dirt on the bumper. The second impact, you can see the hood is dented in right there, and that's the important impact in this particular case because that was the kid's chest that caused the chest injuries in this child. Enough speed is going on here, you then see it jumps up over the top. There's no contact between that initial contact until literally you can see the outline of the kid's backpack, the square there where it landed on the hood after they came down, and then you see where the child slid off to the side on the far side there with the last yellow arrow. Classic mechanism of injury in car versus pedestrian. Horrible scenarios we see in the city sometimes. You know, I drive home at night a lot of times at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning for my ER shifts, and people aren't even stopping at stoplights anymore. People are getting hit and they're getting dragged. And this is a case where the person was dragged and basically for about three blocks and just basically sanded down their buttocks. This is their back end. These are their buttocks that are basically down to, to bone in the pelvis. Again, another mechanism we see. Again, that second vehicle dragging the person along. So a major thing I want to talk about as far as injuries, there are a lot of patterns here we could talk about. At the very end, we'll talk about head injuries, but I talked about major chest injuries. This is a case we had not that long ago. A 19-year-old male in the city of Philadelphia struck at high speed while running across the street. Unconscious on EMS arrival, multiple abrasions, contusions of the left chest. The left chest was just messed up. It just didn't look right. Um, open left femur fracture, cold clammy skin, pulse of 130, BP of 90 over palp. And fortunately, because they were nearby to us, they're only a couple blocks away, they brought them to us in the level one trauma center immediately with no intervention, just locked and loaded and got them into us. In the trauma bay, blood pressure is now 82 over 56, hypotensive, but JVD is evident. We pull back the collar, we're doing our exam, we see this patient has massive jugular vein distension. And that's gonna make you start to think about your national registry exam and every other exam you ever took in your life, about thinking about bad trauma patients who have JVD, and that's where we're gonna talk about these things right now. Chest wall deformity, so we know they took the impact, and the femur fracture probably from the initial impact as well. So they came to us, the patient's very sick, low Glasgow, we intubate the patient right away. They have equal breast sounds. JVD, equal breast sounds. Um, they have no femoral pulses, excuse me, they have femoral pulses but no radial pulses, so in deep shock, which goes along with the blood pressure. So the major chest blunt injuries we tend to see in these sort of scenarios are aortic injuries, massive chest wall injuries with flail chest, 
But I really want to focus on tension pneumothorax and, and, and pericardial tamponade. And the reason we're going to talk about that is I want you to understand the physiology a little bit better. I'm actually going to show you an ultrasound or two, too, which really kind of drives these points home. If you've never seen JVD, that is JVD. I mean, that, those jugular veins are massive. Um, if you're a paramedic, you say, I could get an IV in that, no problem, right? Look at that baby, you know, I got that one. But again, this is a person who obviously has a reason that there is not adequate blood return to the heart. And jugular vein distension means that there's too much pressure in the chest or there's too much dysfunction in the chest to simply let blood return to the chest. And in tension pneumothorax and pericardial tamponade, the two things we're gonna talk about, that's the case. So let's look at the comparison. Tension pneumothorax, hypo, hypotensive, JVD despite the hypotension. Again, we expect them to shock they wouldn't have JVD because they don't have the volume. Absent breast sounds on one side, and that's really the critical differential on your physical examination. And then you have to act quickly because they have a tension pneumothorax. You need to decompress that thing or it's going to kill them. Pericardial tamponade on the other side, hypotensive, JVD despite hypotension, bilateral breast sounds because the problem is the heart, not the lungs, and the pressure the, the pneumothorax is causing. And really, their only real chance for survival when they're that sick is getting to a trauma center. So cardiac tamponade, let's talk real quick, occurs in open or closed trauma, the accumulation of blood in the pericardial sac, and really in trauma, and in most cases, the severity and the fact that you go from just fluid in the pericardial sac to actually that fluid crushing the heart down so it can't function effectively is based on how quickly the fluid accumulates. In trauma, it may just be a couple hundred cc's or even 100 cc's because the pericardium is very rigid. There's nowhere to go. Whereas we can see a renal failure patient comes in, they've been building this tamponade for five weeks, and they can take a liter and a half out of their pericardial space because it gradually expanded. But an acute trauma can just be a little bit of blood, and we're always looking for this rather ultrasounds in the trauma center. Classic signs. Well, you have to reason for the mechanism, right? We shouldn't just see tension, uh, you know, cardiac tamponade out of the blue. We should think about a mechanism of injury and trauma or medical problems like dialysis patients, heart failure patients. The classic exam, hypotension, jugular vein distension, um, and equal breast sounds. Has anyone ever heard muffled breast sounds? I don't know if I ever have, but I know every test I've ever taken, they ask me, what do you hear? I say, muffled breast sounds. They go, you got it, good job, right? But I've never heard in the ambulance, I'm not sure I've ever heard in the ER, and certainly never heard in the helicopter, so I'm not sure. But it's on every single test, so you better know it's there. And then the icing on the cake, if you're an ALS provider, and even in some of these medical patients, like the first clue I see in my medical patients who come in with tamponade, sometimes I get the EKG and the QRS complexes are like this big because the heart is transmitting electricity through the Sea of Galilee, right? It's this big chunk of fluid. You're trying to get that electricity through there. So I'm going to show you this ultrasound real quick. Is anybody here using ultrasound in the field and the sees it out there? Okay, there's some. There's a handful, which I think is great, because this is really where this pays off. So as you look at that screen, as you look from the, let's see, as you look at the screen from the left side to the right side, what's percent of the Great Lakes, okay? So all the way over there, there's Lake Michigan. Okay, and then there's Lake Huron, and then you come across, and then you see, so the first big thing that you see over there, the big thing on, on the far left side is the pericardial fluid. That black is fluid in, in ultrasound. Then the next thing you see on the way over is actually the chambers of the right side of the heart. And then all the way over, the big round thing is actually the left side of the heart. Um, on the top, the big one is the left ventricle, and the bottom is the right ventricle. And what I want you to look for in this video, and then we'll break it down, I'll show it to you in still images so you get it, is I want you to look between the pericardial tamponade, which is the thing all the way over to the left side that kind of looks like a fireman's hat, and that white line, which is the wall of the heart, and see what happens because this tamponade is causing pressure on the heart. Do you see how that line collapses? Do you see how that seems to push in? Every time it goes, it kind of shoves in like that and collapses on the ventricle, both above in the atrium and below on the ventricle. And what's happening here in that ultrasound is this. So let's look at this. So we agreed that this was the pericardial fluid. It's exerting pressure everywhere. It's trying to push out on the wall. It's trying to push down on the heart. So there's pressure in that space. When the ventricle, the right ventricle, is working and full, it pushes back because it has pressure in it because it's a pump, all right? However, when there's no blood in the ventricle, in the right ventricle, it's not pushing, it collapses down. You can see the difference between on that left side and on that right side that now it's collapsed. And this is exactly why we're in the trouble, why you see jugular vein distension. Because you can't, the pressure exceeds, and that ventricle exceeds the pressure in the neck. That blood's just gonna sit up there no matter what because it can't return to the heart because you basically made nowhere for it to go because you've crushed it down by the tamponade. 
All right, so here it is again in real time. And you can see this patient had pericardial tamponade. They had JVD. That's because every time the heart is not pumping on that right side, it's collapsing down. And it's what we call tamponade physiology. We can see very big effusion sometimes, but unless that ventricle is being pushed down, we don't consider it tamponade. All right, so that's number one. That's our pericardial tamponade. Let's talk about tension with thorax, something we can do something about. Again, it occurs in both open and closed trauma. It's thought that tension pneumothorax counted for 10% of mortality of our soldiers in Vietnam. So whenever you see us doing these new triage scenarios and they talk about decompressing a chest, that comes from that literature. The reality that people who died could have been saved we decompressed their chest in Vietnam. And that's why when you see in this SALT triage, one of the rapid interventions is decompress the chest because that was identified uh, as a possibility for intervention. Again, just compression is life-saving if the patient actually has a tension pneumothorax or the needle actually gets there. And I was always trained as a young paramedic, as a young physician, the best place to go is mid-clavicular line, second or third intercostal space. The literature now fairly clearly is evident that this is not the place to go because you've got big pecs, can't get through all that, the needle never gets to the space. You have a greater risk of hitting blood vessels or major vessels, especially if you're decompressing the left side over by the heart. So the preferred approach now is fourth or fifth intercostal space on the side, always staying above the nipple and putting it in right here between the mid-axillary line and the anterior axillary line with the nipple as your mark to decompress the chest. The destructive physiology of tension with thorax is a little bit different. Again, the classic findings, unilateral breath sounds, hypotension, JVD, because the interthoracic pressure exceeds the venous pressure of everything returning from the head. So let's look at this guy, trauma patient. Um, if you have really good eyes, which I no longer have, you can see two itty bitty arrows over on, you see where the R says that's the right side, and so the opposite side is where our pathology is. So let's kind of step through this also. So the first thing I'm gonna point out is the collapsed lung. It looks like a wadded up paper lunch bag. It's kind of shoved in there because all the pressure in that, in that left chest is crushed the lung down. And the pneumothorax is all this open kind of blackish air. If you look on the right side of the chest, you can see the kind of hazy markings all the way out to the side of the chest. But on this side, you can see, you follow that, that wad of kind of wadded down lung, you can see that's the pneumothorax. So it's a pneumothorax. What is it, tension pneumothorax or not? So the tension really says, this is a well lined up x-ray. When you look at this patient, that heart is shoved into the right chest. There's pressure so much pressure with every breath in that left chest that's shoving the heart over to the right, and that's tension pneumothorax. So again, there's so much tension, you can literally shove your heart over in your chest. What's gonna happen as far as the pressure going up the neck? Once again, you cannot return your venous return from your head and neck, and you get JVD. So that's why you see JVD in a setting for a different reason. All right, so tension pneumothorax, there's some discussion now about doing finger thoracostomy. Um, I'm not really buying into that as of yet. It's basically doing the same procedure, same anatomy, between the mid-axillary line, the anterior axillary line, always above the nipple, fourth or fifth intercostal space, and you use a scalpel to open up the tissue, dissect it apart with a little bit of a clamp, and then shove your finger in the chest to get the air to rush out. It's thought that may be safer because you're not blindly shoving a sharp object in the chest. But if you've done that, if you're taking that tension pneumothorax and you do that, what have you just created? a sucking chest wound. And it's, you know, it's kind of a weird paradigm that, hey, it's a good day I made a sucking chest wound, you know? So now you have a sucking chest wound, you gotta get one of your Heimlich valves or one of your commercial sucking chest devices over that hole because they're gonna die from the sucking chest wound now that you created, but you relieve the tension pneumothorax. So again, if you, if you, you know, protocols are starting to look at some of this for advanced providers, I'm not necessarily into it yet, but we'll see how it goes. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna do it, you gotta make sure you put that big seal on it when you're done. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the games and we'll come back for a final session after the next team. Thank you for your time. All team members, take your places. And just as a reminder, the Eagles panel discussion will occur right here on this stage at 11.30. Zionsville Fire Department. I'm Brian. This is Dooley, Gary, Jeremy, and Emmett. And we have made it to the finals of the Gems Games competition. We're real excited uh, to show you what we got and all the, the training that we've done. And we're going to show you what it's like to be response ready for all the right reasons.
County Engine 1, Rescue 14, Ambulance 9, Medic 1, Battalion Chief 2, Auto Accident with Entrapment, at 1, Bobby Halton Way, Engine 1 on scene with 1 trapped, timeout, 1730. Copy on Z. Don't want patient. Get to baby. Brian Mark on scene. Got a baby? Hi ma'am, we're gonna we're gonna take care of her, okay? Baby's crying. Yep. Yep. No visible yep. her. Face. Hi ma'am. What happened? Yep. Awesome. Just hold still, ma'am, okay? We're looking for him, okay? We're going to take care of him. All right, we got it. Hi, what's wrong? Don't you worry. Breathing. Going to okay, just a moment. I know, I'm so sorry. Okay, this is not going to... Control for medic one. It's going to get really tight. Medic one, control, go ahead. Thank you. Got to find him. Control of four patients. Who get four transporting ALS units, please? You okay? Copy four ALS transporting units. Hey, where? What's your name? Well, we're gonna find him. Hey, I got two Where's reds. What's your name? What's two up? reds over here. My name two reds. Is what's right? All right. And I need the. Uh, got it. Hey. Do we have a C collar that we could give? Where's my nephew? Ma'am, I need you to put this on your wound, okay? I was okay. Put that there. Oh my God. Put we're gonna get a collar on you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I gotta know where my nephew is. You know All right. Are you hurting anywhere down there? My partner's got him. Okay. All right. We're working on her. Okay. Follow me that. Okay. Are you hurt anywhere else? Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll be right life. with you, okay? It's okay. It's okay. My back's a little sore, but I... Okay. You gotta find my nap. You got it. Do I have a uh, crowded pulse? Take a deep breath for me. What? Okay. What, what happened? Deep breath. Is she responsive Wait, at all? Is baby responsive? Moans. Okay. You're in a vehicle accident. What happened? Oh, my God. Yes, ma'am. What you? happened? Uh, who are you? Okay. Unequal. All right. <laughs> Do I see any visible trauma on the neck here? Okay. Right. Another baby? Feel here. 182. Okay. Any pain? 118. Okay. Awesome. Ma'am, can, can you lay down this bag? You can you ventilate? So okay. So just try to maintain. Uh, take a look. Right here. What uh, respiration every four to five seconds? Okay. All right. I'm Brian. I'm a paramedic. Brian. I'm sorry. My name's Brittany. Brittany. We're gonna get you some help. Okay. Yeah. I just need you to sit still. These guys are gonna get you out. Okay. Where's my? All right. Okay, all right. So uh, I believe this is a green, okay? Okay. Jeremy, okay, so we've got four got turnations. Okay. This one's a yellow. Do I see any signs of trauma whatsoever? Yeah, she seems okay. Yep. Okay. 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 Nope. Uh, she's good. Is this your baby? I get late, but. Your, your niece. Yeah, we just don't have a collar. I'm gonna need you to. So can you try to console her and keep an eye on her? What are you guys doing? Where is he? I okay. don't know where he went in the accident. Okay. You All right. Yes, ma'am. Getting them out. Sorry. Okay. okay. They're getting them out. Okay. Okay. Let's take this off. Let's take this off. I gotta see what's going on. Yes. Jeremy, what you got here, buddy? Uh, they got it. Rapid, shallow respirations. Uh, has anything changed? Okay. Uh, moving extremities. No. Uh, responsive to painful stimuli. Barely. Just got dislocated shoulder. So this is a definite red. Okay. Does anything else hurt? Look at my face. Look at my face. Okay. Okay. Well, 
You're gonna be pretty. I'm gonna start an IV on what you, hap okay? What, hap what happened to me? You're in a vehicle accident. These guys are helping you get out. Not okay? yet, ma'am. I'm working on it, okay? This aren't you. I'm Brian. I'm a parent. Can you grab this and put it on your yeah. face, okay? Hold it there. Out, they're going to okay. You good, buddy? You good? Uh, extrication over here. Looks like she lost consciousness, so I'm going to check her out. Okay. Is this uh, her? This is her. Anthony, when you... Excellent. Anchor, you good? Got her on a spine board. We're going to check for a level of consciousness. She's unconscious at this point. Is she breathing? She is breathing. Okay. Okay. Does she have a pulse? She's got a pulse. pulse is about yeah, 20. we're okay here. Okay. Okay. I'm starting an IV right here. What's going on? Need a BBM, buddy? I need a tourniquet. Sorry. You gotta tell me, where is he? Who's where? your nephew? So, so this is my uh, little niece. Her on and my nephew's like, 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 like this tall. He was Not walking with me when I, when I was walking in the car. The pulse is okay. in the car. Okay. It's got a... Okay. You gotta find him. You gotta okay, tell me got where he's at. Belly soft, non tender. Soft. Pelvis stable. Pelvis is crushed. Okay. Got it? This one. Extremities. OPAs? Yeah, right there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yep, we got an ambulance coming. Yep, we got an ambulance coming. Is she okay? Can you tell me what's going on? They're okay. Is Kiki okay? Is everyone okay? What's going on? Okay. Continue to hold C spine, continue ventilating. Why is there like one more girl in Stevie? We have a crushed pelvis here. What? Uh, we have a crushed pelvis. Okay. I don't know if uh, we have anything for stabilization of the pelvis. Your pelvis. Uh, we can wrap it. Thank you. No. I can strap it with using this. Plus, good. Yep. Draws. Draws well. You want to help me? Yeah, high flow oxygen. She's still breathing. Okay. Let's go ahead and breathe out the BBM. Let's spend a three roll with that BBM, okay? Um, approximately. Okay. So, we got all the patients that they. I'm okay, do you want to, okay. We just lost pulses. Okay. I, do I feel a pulse? No. Okay. Why uh, won't anybody tell me Do we have a seat collar available? Okay. Have you found him? Yes, ma'am, we're working on him right now, okay? That means he's okay, he's okay? He's doing fine, they're sure? working on, my partner's working on him. You're sure he's okay, right? You're sure yes, my nephew's okay? Has the bleeding stop? I'm into the we do. Okay. We have one. Is she, do I see any other obvious? Um, I'm gonna. We have an extra firefighter that we can utilize over here. Ma'am, if any just hurts, let me know. Okay? I'll let you know. I'll let, I just gotta know that he's okay. Yep. You gotta let me know that my okay. nephew's okay. Can I have you come over my here and arm do impression? Okay. Okay. Oh, that You're gonna do pulses? encircling hands, double up thumbs, okay. keep it at a rate between 100 and 120, pulses. allow for full recoil. Faint? Okay. Good. Where's my nephew? Is, are you. Oh, my leg. Oh. Is the pelvis okay? Push down. Down to the abdomen. Okay. Abdomen okay? Pelvis. Okay. Chest okay? I cannot, ma'am. Okay. We're doing all we can. Okay. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Do I feel pulses? Weak. And again, do we still have radials? You got radials, are weak. Okay. Oh, my word. My sister in law is. Right, at this she time, is going here, to kill here, me. Here, here, here. We have an amount of She is right. going. Okay. No, you don't understand. Say a KG rhythm. That's on you. If you got a monitor, you gotta Okay. Need help, buddy? No, I'm okay. Are we all right, student? Hey, my family is happy. My partners are helping me. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Yep. 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 There's an ambulance coming. I'm gonna check you out, okay? Just gonna check you out. That's fine. Is that head okay? Other than what I see. Okay. We controlled. Can you open your mouth? Is that a piece of okay. Do I see any Do you feel any loose in your mouth? 
Neck okay? Any JVD? Tranquility view. Nada está bien. Equal chest for rising fall. Okay, yo tengo que buscar a mi otra. ¿Qué vas a hacer con este? Porque eso parece que necesita ayuda. Pulses on the hands. No tiene una mandaje, nada, un bandage, no tiene nada. I'm working a heat arrest over here, okay? I'm okay for now. Okay. Oh, this is good. You're going to straighten out your legs. Okay? We're going to help them, okay? I know. Just need to go, go help them. This is good. This is good. Let's check your pelvis. Got the sable? Okay. Femur's good. Keep the press a little deeper, okay? You're getting at a rate of 100 to 120. Okay. Deep breath, ma'am. Deep breath. Fantastic. You got it. Hey, All clear? Can, can you get the bras on tape for me? All right. Um, do we see your Pressure. Ma'am, 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 can, can I have you stand okay, over here? Awesome. Come on. Yes, yes, still bagging. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You stay right here. Sit down. Yes, ma'am. Sit, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. You wait here. Pressure his head. Okay? With the fluids. We're going to keep an eye on her. But uh, EKG rhythm uh, monitor control. We can get her on. All right, gentlemen. Otherwise, when the transport comes, just let her know that she's got an IV. Head? Yep. What do you need, buddy? I'm growing up Epi Yellow. Hey, ma'am. I'm Brian. Okay, I'm sorry we've been delaying. So, 1.3 milliliters. Where are you hurting besides this, obviously? My leg, my back. Oh, no. Are you hurting the door? I was walking the kids. We were going for a walk. And all of a sudden, we came by. How many kids? I see you. I see you. I see you. Got it. And I threw the car, the carrier, because I didn't want her to get hurt. I got that. I don't want her. And then all this. Collapsing over there. Give me this. I don't know where he is. God, it's helping me so Grab the monitor. They're working on your neck. Right now. Oh no, I need that. Okay? I'm not sure. You guys say that you don't know. Sure. Lay down, lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. It's your chest. Okay. You got to right. compress okay. deeper, my guy, okay? Got a pulse? One point got your okay. Uh, sorry, four, okay. three milligrams. One point three milligrams. pulse, okay? Yeah. Uh, Sir, uh, airway open. Pause for a right pulse right check. Pause. Pause. The ambulance comes here. They'll get you guys to the hospital. Okay. I've got out. nothing. Okay. Good. Right. Sure Continue compressions. Try to do That's the encircling okay. technique. Thing. All right. She looks right like there. She Perfect. Okay on our initial assessment. We're going to go check some more people, all right? Okay. You just stay with her. Keep an eye on her. Yes, ma'am. I'll hook this up to a high flow tube. I need a 12 lead, but he's using the monitor. I'm not sure if we. Okay. 15 liters, non breather. Okay. We need a monitor. Can I use this? Okay, gotcha. Uh, we're in full rest here. Okay. Do we have any? Okay. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Let me go ask that talk about. Hey, do you guys have an AED? No. What's going on? Water? No, they're using that up for the arrest. What's she having? Chest pain? Chest pains. Yeah. Okay. Is he bagging easy? Get some aspirin. Let's get that pressure. Yep. I got the blood pressure. What do you guys need? Uh, nothing. We're just going to grab some aspirin and get some blood pressure on her. Ma'am, have you ever had aspirin? 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 No. No? Okay. Allergy? It's going to be all right, okay? Allergia? Where were you at in the vehicle? No allergia. Were you in the vehicle? I was in the car when I Were you in the passenger seat? Which medicine? Did you have a seatbelt on? Okay. All right. It's all right. All right. We're going to lay you back nice and easy, okay? Okay. I know. Can you just lay back for me? I'm lodipine and lisinopril. Okay. okay. Yeah. Can you squeeze or uh, press harder? We're going to put a rate of 100 on to 120. Go ahead and straighten out your legs for me, okay? okay. Take a deep breath. You're aiming for about an Good. inch and a half uh, that again. depth. Uh, okay. Got it. One more. Awesome. I'll give her four baby up. aspirin. And actually, we need to be equal. I apologize. We need two? to do an, uh, 15 and two. So, uh, the shoulders every 15 compressions, two ventilations. Do I see a yeah, it's, shoulder here? It's muy malo. And the right shoulder, does that look okay? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And the lower extremities, do I see any bleeding? Uh, okay. I know, I know. 
Stay real still for me, okay? Deep breath. All right, we're gonna hold that right there. I'm just gonna lift up your stump. You don't pelvis. Okay. Clearing Abdomen all, soft. Clearing all fields. Awesome. Any JBD? Push down the pelvis. Can you wiggle your toes for me? Okay. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Place this uh, OPA. Can you squeeze okay. my hands here? It's good. Awesome. The large chest pain. Awesome. You, you have any you can, yep. history? Do you take any medications for anything? How old are you? Okay. But are you okay. done with the monitor? Or, or I'll need a go ahead. Right. Okay, we got some ambulances coming yep, here. Go ahead. We're gonna okay. get you checked out in just a moment. I just need you to relax and stay real. So still. we're three minutes okay. since our. Oh. You're gonna be just fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So three right minutes here. since our last epi. Okay. I'm gonna push another 0.13 milligrams epinephrine. Okay. Keep compressions. I'm oh, sorry. going to take a picture of your heart, okay? We're doing everything we can, okay? It's going okay. We're, we're working on it. Can I use that cuff? So, can I use Yep, this? absolutely. Take it. Good compressions. You got ambulances coming, buddy? Slow down a little bit. We're shooting 100 to 120. Yeah, they're all getting worked on, okay? All the kids are okay. He's going to put a few stickers on your chest, okay? Chest, okay? We just need to awesome. focus on you right now, okay? Sorry. I understand. So your pressure is 112 over 84. Awesome. And my pulse? Respiration. You need to rotate the pressers. Um, awesome. You okay? Sorry, I'll cover you up. Buddy. Zionsville, if you guys can come over here to where Dr. Dickinson is, he'll be talking with you over the next few minutes. We'll take care of all your equipment. While they're getting set up, again, the, the Eagles uh, panel discussion will be here at 1130, and um, we'll be awarding the first, second, and third place trophies right after Dr. Dickinson gets done here. So we'll have those results for you shortly. Where am I going? He's Ironville, come on over, don't escape. Oops. You're not allowed to escape. Dr. Dickinson. Oh, wrong side. Yep. Wrong side. So first year for you guys? Yes. You ever do it again? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. What was your biggest challenge? What did you guys think, looking back at the logistics of this, what do you think your biggest challenge in the stage was today? Resources. Right. And we talked about this actually with one of the first groups when you guys were sequestered away. It, you know, things are, things are tough. We don't have endless resources these days, and sometimes scenes are like this. Um, what were your strategies trying to optimize your lack of resources in this case? Determine uh, life threats. and who's the highest priority and treat those first. Yeah. Now, I noticed you guys worked your pediatric code for the duration. Any thoughts about that as far as resource and working codes and things like that? Because we talk about it in triage all the time. If they're, you know, do you think that it being a kid, we talked about this earlier a little bit too, played into that? Probably. Yeah, yeah it's and tough. The fact that they were also alive initially and then declined. Right. And that's really hard. And I, I know in my own life, it, you know, the decision like, okay, they're dead. I walk by them, they're dead. When you walk by them, you make that expectant decision or you, you start to work them. It's really hard to sometimes get the perspective of standing back and like, what's still going on in my scene and where do I go from here and things like that. Yeah, totally. So they did a great job on the woman who was trapped in the vehicle, sick patient coming out. A really good job on that. Um, what were your thoughts about the baby in the bassinet? Did they ever uh, haunt was, you? Did you think we'd come back and have a curveball and it would explode or anything like that? Did you think, <laughs> did you think that there was a, a trap in that because the baby seemed okay? Uh, the baby was crying the whole time, heard that, uh, yeah. so that was a good sign. Yeah. Well, we, used to, we set this up yesterday, we had a, uh, an audio that the baby cried the entire time. It drove all of us crazy. We decided to undo it because it just like drove everybody nuts. All right, great job, guys. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Thank, Thank you, you, very, you very, much. very much. Thank you. Great job. Yeah, come on up. So in the scenario today, the, uh, we had two bad head injuries. The driver of the vehicle had a bad head injury, and then the pediatric cardiac arrest, the three-year-old also had a bad head injury as well. So let's kind of talk about traumatic brain injuries in 2023. 
People talk about head injuries, traumatic brain injury across the spectrum of illness, really anything from concussions to, uh, to massive brain injuries and real bad trauma like we've seen here today. There's actually a huge amount of research and, and things being done that kind of look at um, glaucoma scale, CAT scan imaging, they're now biomarkers for trying to figure out traumatic brain injury to uh, detect at the really micro level injuries to the brain and all that's going on. But I think for us as EMS provider, I really want to kind of talk about our sick trauma patients. We don't have, we don't have CAT scans in the field, comma, yet. Um, we probably never will, but we, maybe we do. Some of the stroke centers send them out there, but not for traumas. So we want to talk about those patients who have the Glasgow Scoma scale of 14 or less. I obviously don't have any. All right. So again, for me, when I look at a head injury come in and I'm assessing a head injury, whether it's in the field or in the ED, I'm always, the thing I always do is I say, dude, show me your thumbs. Can you follow that simple command? Can you show me your thumbs? And if they can't follow that simple command and they're confused, that gives them a Glasgow of 13 from the start and it's a head injury for me, I'm gonna upgrade that patient. They're going to the trauma bay. If I'm in the field, that patient's going to a trauma center, not the local hospital. That simple thing, show me your thumbs. They seem confused, they can't get it. Now I have innovated people before who don't speak English and they didn't show me their thumbs. I feel sorry for them and I apologize later, but it, that seemed like a good idea at the time, and full transparency. The glaucoma scale is really our backbone of what we do in the field, how we assess and we reassess and we trend. It's very, very important that you understand how the glaucoma scale is. I had a doctor call me a number of years ago from a community hospital, they want to transfer trauma and I said, what's the glaucoma scale? He said, zero. And I said, pull your card out and look at your card again because there's no such thing as a zero, right? The lowest is a three. The stage has a glaucoma scale of three and their patient can't have a glaucoma scale of zero. So make sure you, you use this and trend it. Because if you get there and you say, we got there, the Glasgow was 13, now it's nine. That's a really, really big deal and decompensation for the patient. And we're talking about these real head injuries, right? These are super sick people. This person partially ejected from a vehicle with really obviously massive head injuries. So what's our management? Well, TBI, you know, in the field, glaucoma scale, we already talked about the importance of determining it and trending it. And as we talk about, and we're going to spend the most of this last session talking about the three H-bombs, which we're teaching these days, the kind of fundamental approach to head injuries in the field and in the emergency department, we want to get some vital data. We want to know what the blood pressure is because we want the patients to be hypotensive. We want to fight that. We want to know what their oxygen saturations is because we don't want them to be hypoxic. And we do a good pupillary exam in case they blow a pupil. Initially, if they have equal pupils, but then later they get in trouble, it's important for us to know that. Um, using that information is really critical to maximize the success. We all agree that if you get hit by a car and you have a brain injury, there's nothing we can do about that. That is the primary brain injury. It is a secondary injury of the sequelae of hypoxia, low blood pressure, pressure inside the skull that cause the secondary brain injury. And no matter how good we are, we can't change the fact they got injured except through prevention. But once they're injured, how can we optimize the best possible outcome? And that's really, really important understanding this. So the three H-bombs, what are they? There's hypoxia low oxygen saturations on your pulse ox, hypotension, and then hypo or hyperventilation, which can make the outcome worse. We really want to avoid these. So in hypoxia, again, a brain without oxygen is a brain in trouble, right? You don't want to have an anoxic or hypoxic brain injury. BLS interventions, very straightforward, keeping the airway clear, so oxygen get in and out, and putting on high flow oxygen. ALS interventions may include intubation, if that's appropriate, for the patient if you can do that as well. The other thing to be very much aware of, and I've been really tortured over the last couple of years about the issue of in stroke and MI and medical patients, you know, the teaching has really changed from high flow oxygen for everybody to maintain the oxygen at 95, 94, somewhere in that. I, I never get the test questions right anymore because it moves back and forth so much. That is not the case in brain injury. In brain injury, maintaining SATs at, nine, you know, turning down the oxygen so you get too much oxygen is not, is not where it stands. And the literature continues to show that. This article just came out in March looking at high flow oxygen for the first four hours of traumatic brain injury in critically injured patients, and there was no downside to it. So continue to give that subset of your patients high flow oxygen because the downside of an anoxic or a hypoxic brain injury is far better than the risk of giving them too much oxygen. All right, so the h bone. let's talk about hypotension first. Uh, excuse me, hypoxia, we talked about, we'll do hypotension. So if they're hypotensive, again, the brain needs perfusion. If your brain is swelling, it, just like we've talked about kind of in the chest, if there's pressure in there, you need to get enough blood flow up to the brain to keep it perfused. Because again, if the blood, brain doesn't get blood flow, it's gonna die, just like it does in a stroke. Same thing with traumatic injury. So you wanna make sure their blood pressure is adequate. So what can you do? Well, if you're BLS, stop any external bleeding. A lot of these patients are multiple trauma patients. Stop the bleeding if you can. 
If you're, you're alone, you gotta make a decision. I got a patient with a bad head injury. I'm waiting 15 minutes for AOS, but the trauma center is 10 minutes away. Lock and load and get them going, right? Anybody gives you crap about showing up with a critical trauma patient because you were gonna wait for AOS to show up? Inter intercepts are fine, things like that, but if you can get them to a trauma center faster, to a, doc, you know, to a good ED faster, that's what you want to do. At the AOS level, obviously, IV fluids to raise the blood pressure. You know, I'd like to see my pressures like 110, 120 at the absolute minimum, and then we give our vasoactive meds, push dose epi or whatever we happen to have in our bag to keep the blood pressure up. And then finally, the last H bomb is the hyperventilation. I think this is one that we really um, have the best con consideration of, we've gotten much better about doing. If we overventilate the patient, we drive, we make them alkalotic, and we cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessels in the brain, which in some circumstances might be a little bit helpful, but the bottom line is just like hypoperfusion or shock and lack of blood pressure, if you make the pipe smaller, the blood doesn't get to the brain, they don't do as well. And sometimes that means someone walking up and saying, dude, you're bagging way too fast, slow it down. And when I sit there, it drives my young docs crazy in the ER because they think I'm being very uh, condescending. When I say, slow it down, listen to me, no, uh, listen to me. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, bag them. One, and they go, I get it, I get it, I get it. So again, control that ventilation because overventilation is a problem. And equally, underventilation, if they're not breathing adequately, they have a bad head injury, they're breathing at four a minute. We have to supplement the ventilation so you get oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. Very, very important. So inter interventions, uh, meticulous rate control for ALS and BOS is really the most important thing we can do. And think about 12 breaths per minute. As a medic, I always thought about hyperventilation was this. Even when we hyperventilate patients with brain injuries after we get their CAT scan back or worry about swelling and things like that, we're talking about a ventilation rate of 16, 18. We're not ventilating at 30. That's just a crazy rate. So be aware if we ever do hyperventilate, that's just an insanely high rate. AOS intervention, having end tidal CO2 can be very helpful to know what's coming in and what's going out. And then RSI innovation and paralysis to take control of their breathing if, if you need to do that on the ALS side, kind of all effective. So does it matter? Well, it really does. I think the three H's, as I, as I look at a hand injury, I always run the three H's through my own brain for a checklist. Hypoxia, hypoperfusion, hyperventilation, or hypoventilation. I keep running it through my head, like what can I do better? Are we doing a good job with all those things? So it's a great way to memorize the best way to manage traumatic brain injury. Um, and again, they're all things under our control as EMS providers. We're not talking about drilling holes in their heads. We're talking about basic good care to maintain blood pressure, to good ventilation, to provide oxygen. And actually, there was a good study a couple years ago that Dr. Spady did um, looking at this. And if you actually follow the three H bombs and avoid them, there's actually a greater chance of survival of the patient to hospitalization and a decrease in mortality over time. So it's real. The last thing I want to kind of close with this year is this. Every year we do these incredible scenarios on the stage, crazy things, helicopters crash on the stage, snipers hit us from the balcony, whatever it happens to be. We do this day in and day out, but in all seriousness, you know, what we do on the stage during the gem games is what we do every day out there. And remember what we do is always stressful, whether we know it or not. People say to me, like, how do you do that every day? And I'm like, I just do it. And maybe I'm from a time, you know, having been in the fire service now for 40 something years and an EMS provider for the same amount of time, maybe, I, I, maybe I'm, I'm just too old school that I think I can internalize a lot of those things. But that's really not the way to approach it. I think that, you know, the events like today, you know, overwhelming challenges, but there's no choice. Even if it's overwhelming, you've got to fix it. Because they called you to fix the overwhelming challenge. And that's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a lot of second guessing. Should I continue doing CPR on that kid? Should I stop? Did I miss something? Could I save that kid? That, that, that'll eat at you, that'll keep you awake. You wake up at six in the morning when you're supposed to sleep until nine and all of a sudden that, your brain snaps on and wonder what you could have done better. We really need to watch out for each other. We need to watch out when people reach out and say something, don't let it be a passing glance, like boy, that was really hard. Don't walk away from it because you want to get home if you're a volunteer or you want to go hop in the shower or whatever. What, 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 what are you thinking about? What, what bothers you about that? And watch them, watch how they're doing, watch for signs of stress. I see physicians all the time who are stressed out who end up not really doing as well and shortening their career because the stress is involved. The old school of like, look, look, rookie, just toughen up. Just do it, it's what we do. You're a paramedic, you're a firefighter. Those days are gone, and I'm, I'm kind of glad they're gone. I think that we need to have the knowledge that there are now resources out there for us. Our peers understand that. I think every set of eyeballs I see in this room understands that, that we have to be a, a, a resource for everybody. And then there are professional people who can help us out too. You know, for us in the pandemic, in the ER, in those dark days, 
it was unbelievable. You know, and it's uh, to then reach out and just go to somebody like, I'm done, I need help. I had partners who did that, I did that, because it finally got to me. And you, no matter how tough, how thick your skin is, it's very important you take care of yourself and take care of those around you. Because you know, now post-pandemic, wherever we are, we're, we're an endangered species. What we do is endangered. We're having staffing problems, manpower problems, people are leaving EMS right and left, people are leaving medicine right and left, I don't have enough nurses in my hospital. Look out for each other every single day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dickinson. While we finally or finalize the tabulation of the scores, I would like to bring all three teams back up. So if I can have Sam McGill Fire Rescue, Sussex County EMS, and Zionsville Fire Department, come on up here on the stage, please. And while we're finalizing those scores, we have a fairly complex system to capture every single point. Let me have all the volunteers that put this together over the last few months come down here and right down here in front, please. These, These individuals not only design the rooms and work on all the details, work with FDIC logistics to try to get all the necessary props, get it organized, go through dry runs, but not a one of them gets paid. And it's just an amazing uh, amount of dedication. And I sure appreciate all of you, and especially Robin, if you'll raise your hand. He's my right hand man on this, on this whole thing. So volunteers, thank you very, very much. Now I'd like to ask uh, our three uh, gentlemen to come up. First is Dr. Ed Dickinson, medical director, to help present the trophies. David Rhodes, editor-in-chief, fire engineering. And Dr. Ted Lee, Jim's content director. That's a good time to give applause right there, guys. Right, everybody all ready? First off, you guys did a fantastic job. I hope that you enjoyed this scenario. I know that it was a real learning experience for all of us and hopefully it's something you can take back to your organizations and put on simulations and do training just like this. Would everybody agree that this incident could happen in your neighborhood? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, and that's again what our, what our goal is. So, in third place this year, Sam McGill Fire Rescue. Samuel, why don't you walk down this way? Samuel, walk down this way. We've got some folks that would like to shake your hand. So we have two teams left. Okay, what do we look like here? <laughs> so I'm going to announce the first place team. Just because if I announce the second place team, it kind of takes away from the first, first place team. So, in first place this year, Sussex County. And please save some of that applause for our second place team this year, Zionsville Fire Department.
And lastly, I'd like to thank, uh, in addition to the volunteers we've already talked about, there's a lot that goes into this, the people at FDIC Logistics and Genesis Rescue Tools, this uh, Hirsch tool or spreading tool. I'm old school, I said Hirsch tool. Okay, I dated myself. Uh, they generously allow us to use their tools during this, just like Echo Health also did. So we wanna thank them. Thank you very much for attending. And remember, the Eagles are gonna be right here on the stage at 11.30 for their panel discussion. So take a break and come on back and watch the Eagles. Thank you. <laughs>